like there are two things about Oregon that we know that the rest of the country doesn't. One, because no one pays attention outside of, you know, mm-hmm. uh, well, up here, basically. Yeah. One is that Oregon is way better than people even maybe think nationally. They're legit. Mm-hmm. And they're legit at all levels. And I do think there are a lot of people that don't think that because it's Oregon. And they haven't watched a lot of their games. A lot of their games have been boring blowouts. And they haven't watched them. And they watched them almost lose to Ohio State. So that's one. Yeah. I don't disagree. Two is this idea that anybody's getting Dan Lanning. You're not getting Dan Lanning. Certainly doesn't appear that way. You're just not. No. And I think we up here follow him and talk to him enough and listen to him and know he is not leaving, at least right now. No. But the rest of the country, I think, thinks that if Ohio State came calling and fired Ryan Day and said, here's a bunch of money, that it would be a no-brainer for him to leave. But I, I don't th- think he would take that job. I don't think so either. I mean, we, I, I don't know whether or not that the Alabama job was his. But certainly, uh, he was. his name was connected to it, and he immediately shot it down. And we also know that he is a family guy, and his family likes being here, and he's talked about how he doesn't want to move around. And coaches say that all the time. But the other one is, if, if you are somewhere where you can win a national championship. Like and that's and that's the difference. Like Kalen DeBoer played for a national title at UW. Very few people thought that UW was a sustainable program to win a national championship. Like Dabo at Clemson, everyone said that that well Dabo won't be around at Clemson. Why? He won two national championships there. You don't need to go anywhere else. And so if Dan Lanning can consistently put together top five and six recruiting classes, if he can be the number one team in the country, if he has a giant, robust NIL budget, which, by the way, he doesn't have to fight people, go look around the country at some of the NIL problems that people are having. And we're talking about at big schools, places like Miami, places like Florida, places like Clemson, certainly Washington, USC. You've never once heard boo that Oregon has an NIL problem. And now he's on the doorsteps of potentially winning a national championship, whether he gets it done or not. It's not because if they lose this year, it's not because they're at Oregon. So I just don't understand, with the exception of someone coming along and offering that guy $20 million a year, and we know that Oregon has been willing to pony up, maybe not to that level. So short of just an offer that Oregon refuses to match, I'm just not certain why you leave when seemingly you have everything you need to win and win here, and he's kind of proven that. Totally agree. The only this this goes back to what I was teasing. The only scenario, and I think there is one where I would I would wonder if the odds would increase of getting him out of here, and that is if they win the title. Yeah, I mean Jim Harbaugh did it. Yeah, and I just wonder because he is certainly a guy who he he wants to see this through. Yes, Dan Lanning, and if he does sooner than he thought. Mm-hmm. Maybe the next challenge arises. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people are wired to be like, well, yeah. I mean that, okay, I did it. Yeah. And now my now I've kind of changed my mindset. Yeah. Whereas before, if they don't win it, you ain't getting him, dude. He's yeah. coming back. Like you, Everything you just said, I think, is spot on yeah. about what he has at Oregon, and he'll he keep building it. He seems obsessive compulsive yes. about winning it here. That's right. But if he wins it here yeah. this year, yeah. and they're the only team that's undefeated, they're the number one seed in the tournament, I wonder if that changes things because I also think that you mentioned his family. That's always a big one, and it's always one that we don't ever really truly know. Mm-hmm. If the family, if the wife doesn't like it here yeah. or the kids are having trouble or whatever, yeah. that's a big deal, and it's mm-hmm. never something we can put a you know like we don't know we're not in inside their house, but uh, that's a you know yeah. that that would be a reason that would that the odds would go up. If you asked me, is he here in 10 years? I would say no, because very few coaches stick around for 10 years. It's just, it's, it's a different world in which we live in and guys get burnt out and families get burnt out. Um, but I, I just, uh, so I'll never say never, but I, I do feel like for the foreseeable future, I don't think that there is a job out there, including Alabama or Florida or wherever else, LSU. Chiefs. Yeah. That, that would be the only one. And, and he, we've asked him about the NFL, and he's kind of hemmed and hawed at it. Like he said, it's not really, you know, it's, it's a different game, and he's never really explored it that much. But that would be the one. If he won a national championship and the NFL came calling, and there was that rumor, I forget who it was. Was it, I forget which NFL scribe had it. Andy Reid's retiring. What? Andy Reid's retiring. Yeah, right? Like someone, I, I, it, was a, it wasn't just like a, a dumbass, you know, like like Twitter account. It was a legit NFL writer like said that. Like a Rappaport? That, what? Like a Rappaport? Yeah. They said that with what Mike Tomlin is doing, what Dan Campbell is doing, what Jim Harbaugh is doing, that culture 
it, it, for a long time there, it was offenses X's and O's, mm-hmm. right? Like, I want the the next whiz kid. I want Shanahan. I want Lafleur. I want uh, why well, can't I think of who the Rams guy is? Uh, McVay. McVay. Right. You want the you want the the whiz kid innovator. All the shifts, all the motions, and we're gonna out scheme people. And the NFL reporter said that there does seem to be a trend now that NFL teams are looking for the next culture builder. They want a Dan Campbell. They want a Jim Harbaugh. And the name that they said was getting brought up in NFL circles was right now the guy who is building a culture that everyone wants to be a part of in college football, and that's Dan Lanning. And that, to me, is the one that not not this year, but as you stated, whether they win a national title this year, two years, three years, four years down the road, you've conquered that mountain. If college football continues to be an absolute pain in the ass with recruiting in the grind, Dan Lanning is obsessive. But that recruiting, I don't care who you are, that stuff wears thin. And dealing with all that crap and dealing with general managers and and, and NIL budgets and all this and all the changes that are going to be coming, it wouldn't shock me if, if when they win a national title or if they do somewhere down the road, like you said, Andy Reid retires and Kansas City is sitting there as a Midwest guy or or just some primo job in the NFL, the Dallas Cowboys or something opens up and says, hey, would you like $14 million a year to come here and build a culture in the NFL and think, what is the ultimate challenge? How many people can say that they've won a Super Bowl and a national title? Not many. That's the sort of thing that I think eventually may get them out of board. I do think, though, that like the nice thing for Duck fans to fall back on when it comes to the NFL is in a place like Kansas City, Mahomes would have to want him. Yeah. Mah- like Mahomes is going to decide who that next coach is. Like I think in Chicago, if they're smart, Caleb will decide who his next coach is, or at least he will have a major voice in it. And so with those types of quarterbacks, they're going to want the innovative mind. They're going to want yeah. Johnson in Detroit or – uh, I know he's lost a little bit of shine, but Slowick down in uh, Houston, he was a big guy for a while last year. That seemed like the next OC name. So there might be teams where they go that leader of men type route, but I also think that it's going to depend on what that quarterback oh, wants. Sure. I and, just, I'm just, I guess we're just spitballing and saying, it, it, you know, with all the rumors that are floating out there, that's the one caveat that I would say that would scare me. And it doesn't really scare me because I think it's further down the road. Uh, anytime you're successful, people are going to come looking for your coaches. I think what would scare me more than anything else is that your staff continues to get pilfered. Because that's the hardest thing about continuing to win in college ball is replacing your your staff. Uh, Dabo was never able to do it. Uh, well, Stoops actually, was... Dabo did do it for years. Yeah, that's true. And then it, it, and then, and then it fell apart. And then he started, he lost Venables yep. and he started losing some guys. And then and all Chad of a sudden, Morris and... and you're right. Like they, you did notice a difference in yep. Clemson, but I think one of the big things about Clemson always was that for those years where he was winning yep. big, he had his same he had staff, staff. He, yep. for some reason he yep. was able to keep them all. But most of the time, what does in a, a, a program where you, you, you know, Stoops lost his fastball when he lost the must champs and all those guys. And, um, you know, LSU certainly has never been able to stay on top because their staff gets pilfered and they've been through coaches. The one guy that that bucked the system was Saban because that guy just, it didn't matter. That dude was lights out at finding replacements and they always reinvented it. And, you know, you, you lose one of the best young coaches in, in, in college football and look at what he's doing down at, at ASU with Kenny Dillingham and Will Stein comes in and their offense has been stinking great. But, you know, that's the that's to me a bigger issue for Oregon isn't losing Lanning. It's it's constantly losing my staff. But as someone points out in in this new world of of NIL, you have the richest owner in college football. Oh, for sure. And that is a And that's why Lanning's not going anywhere. Right there. Yes. Do you okay, real quick, because this is dumb to even talk about. But uh, who are we to, you know, avoid talking about something dumb? Yeah, that's what we do. If Lanning left, mm-hmm. who do you hire? <laughs> Seriously, I mean, nobody, who do you hire? Dan Lanning wasn't even on anyone's radar, and look at that, and, and you went out and found him. So who who the hell knows? Who's the next? Well, who do you target? Well, I, I guess I'd be asking like, who does Ohio State target? And I haven't even I haven't even thought about that. Vrabel is popping yeah, up. He's, he's the name that pops up. Signetti pops up. Yeah. Would Vrabel be willing to go and recruit? Don't know. He doesn't seem like a guy who would love the recruiting process. And that's the other part about college is you have to be willing to kiss the ass of 18-year-old, 17-year-old kids. And I don't think he kisses you want anyone's Dillingham? ass. 
I think you. I mean, again, it's it's been one year, but look at what he's done down at ASU. I would say that in the world of college football, I want the young, innovative. I don't want. I, I want the young, uh, you know obsessive, thirty-five year old. You know guy. who that guy is now? Hmm. Uh, that Tulane guy. Yeah. yeah. Summerall. Yeah. And he won't it's be some. Summerall, Summerall, correct? I believe. It? Yeah, yeah. Like John by the way, Summerall. He's not going to be at Tulane very long. No, God, no. He's the hot name because he's young and yeah. he's his a... quarterback won't be there very long too. In fact, maybe there'll be a package deal next year for somewhere. 